What is up guys and welcome to another Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition Multiplayer Battle Replay. This is going to be a 4v4 and we're going to be using Capture Age and I managed to figure out how to get the game audio playing over it. Uh, yeah, here we go. We're here. No, I don't need any, any of that crap. Well, anyway, let's see what we're dealing with here. So, Heli, this comes from Heli as, as, uh... Same as the last save. Ethan is green currently. He's playing as the Saracens. He's, he's allied to the Cumans, the Brightons, and Japanese. And they are playing on Arabia, everyone's favorite map in Age of Empires 2. For better or for worse. And also interestingly, um, uh, Heli is currently a Heli who is Ethan. They're the same person. Is playing. I'm going to turn off... Uh, how do I fucking turn off the score thing? Because it's annoying me right now. Like, like the way the way things are keep on like changing around uh if i want to rewind i gotta i gotta i i gotta pay for the pro feature damn i hate it when they do that like the one useful thing you know like i've i've always hated how replays in video games just you cannot go backwards like they just have not figured out the technology to just rewind i guess they just assume people don't care about the replay feature and then the one time it's possible i gotta pay extra for it Now you do some good for the community and just let it do it. Let it be free, man. Okay, it's orange is not on Heli's team. I made a mistake earlier. Also, yeah, his ally blue is uh, is, uh, is throwing down another town center. What faction is blue? Cumans? Do they get any bonuses for building it? That's a really, really early second town center. I commend him. I wonder if the Cumans get any advantages towards... Uh... Red has taken to walking themselves in and yellow. Interestingly... Um... So, so, yeah, uh, actually everyone is taking to walling themselves in except for, except for the players on this flank, blue and, blue and green. Yeah, brilliant, he's just gonna throw down another house just to delay them. I love, I love, I love seeing resourcefulness in Age of Empires players, it's, it's interesting. He's just gonna keep on, or wherever, wherever they decide to, to attack, he's just gonna throw down another wall, just half, what, well, another, another house, just a half constructed house. Because that's what we do in this game. Yellow is is just hovering. It's just hovering right outside of Blue's base. Outside of the Japanese base here. I also find it funny how the Japanese villagers don't even like look Japanese. Like it's not like Age of Empires 3 where they actually gave them different models. But here comes Yellow with the... Attacking the mining camp. Okay, I was, I was going to say that's kind of weird. But Blue has... Uh, has set, has set down an outpost. Okay, Blue has set down an outpost, a watchtower on every mine, like every every building of economic importance. So good to see that from his part. Yeah, Yellow and Red really trying to take advantage of the fact that he has no walls. But Blue, Dark Blue has, you know, the Japanese, they, they have their own take on the wall. It doesn't need to be completely physical. It can be just be outposts. That's interesting. I don't think I've I've actually seen outpost heavy gameplay. Like watching these matches, there's always just walls. Like I don't think I've ever seen somebody rely on outposts and not like this early in the game. We have one person advancing into the castle age on the red team, and we will see if he is going to do the castle drop. It's it's a ripe it's a ripe opportunity for a castle drop. Blue doesn't have that much of a military and is just purely defensive right now. It is it is so ripe for a cap castle drop. There's a siege workshop. Oh, 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 maybe this is why the game last was so fast, according to Heli. I think is somebody's gonna be. We're gonna be seeing some artillery soon, maybe. And it's 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 being placed. He's he's placing it pretty far forward, so that's that's why it has me thinking that like he's getting ready. He's gearing up for for an attack, for a concerted attack, and he's doing this to get rid of the outposts, maybe. We'll see about that. We'll see about if Elberk uh, gets any mileage out of that siege workshop. Right now, though, it's mostly just an, 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 an endemic pinprick warfare, just small engagements. Also, there's a third human town center. Man, he's just going cram on the town centers. Like, one more town center, and he will have as many town centers as the entire enemy team at this point. Or almost. Yellow's just hovering around, just making his cavalry a nuisance and being annoying to the other players. I mean, I respect that. But uh, the, uh, the, the, the Mongols have broken through with their archers, and they're... 
harassing the uh, the the Cumans. Or, I mean, uh, not the Cumans. They're harassing the uh, Brightons. There's one Cuman knight here just being a, a, a real Giga Chad, just countering that entire raid. Got a Manganel. Okay. Also, Japanese are going super defensive with the castle as well, but they're bringing they're 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 under attack by. Uh, they are indeed under attack by. Uh, by battering rams. We'll see how long this place lasts. Oh, <laughs> he's gonna dedicate his entire he's gonna dedicate his entire villager swarm to to getting rid of getting the castle. To getting the castle done. And for the time being, he might be safe from red, at least in the center of his town where the farms are. He got his castle up just in time, yo. Like, this would have been so much worse without it. He's at least bought himself some time. Sometimes, you know, when you're playing the flank in this game, you just, you, you just, you just gotta, you just gotta, like, make yourself die as slowly as possible. Like, that, that's, that's really your goal, buying time for the rest of the team. There's a bit of a mess going on over here. I don't know, like, you got intermixed green, red, and yellow. Like, red red and yellow from one team, and then green just, like, flanking them or whatever was happening there. That was that was Heli using his camels, trying to help support. Good, good guy, Ethan, you know, trying to support his, uh, his, his, his Japanese ally. Enemy team. I'm saying enemy team, like, even though this is taking place from the perspective of red, yellow, and... Uh, an orange and pink. It's I, I, uh, my, my Ethan. You know, is my, is my Discord moderator. So he's like, I'm saying enemy team, his enemy. I'm, I'm, I'm narrating it from his perspective. Uh, got, yeah, we got a castle being thrown down on the left flank. So they're going. They seem to be mostly defensive right now on the left flank. Uh, pink and orange seem to be mostly defensive right now. But hey, yeah, this would be the perfect time to <laughs> to thwart the castle build, man. You you came here just in time. Thwart, come on, do it. Oh wait, no, sorry. This is I got mistaken. This is this is this belongs to the Brightons. Never mind. Ignore what I was saying there. I, I mixed up the teams, and the Brightons are 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 fighting through the small gap here. Oh wow, this might this this might go very very badly for Orange and uh, because of the way he built up his defenses. Like this is the problem with building up your defenses. It it goes both ways. Especially when you use buildings, like neither side can traverse it, so it takes it's even more time for your military to actually intervene. Let me check what's going on over here. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, let me slow down what's going on. Okay, so Red also has a bunch of crossbows running through Ellie's town, and he doesn't have his military nearby. But in any case, let's uh, let's see what what damage the Brightons are gonna do. My money is on the Brightons, and oh, he... yeah, yeah, get. Let's see, let's see what the crossbows can do, uh, how well they can contribute to this fight. Hey, it didn't do too bad, eh? I, I think they realize they've, they've, uh, they've gotten the most they can out of this, uh, out of this encounter and it's best to just disengage. Just disengage and cut your losses and keep your army intact to fight another day. Uh, Heli's just, Ethan's just consistently, very consistently getting harassed, and he's not doing too good in the points department, at least. Though his team overall seems to be doing better, but not by much. Like, 200 points at this stage in the campaign. Campaign or stage in the match is not that much. But Br the Brightons are making, are making some progress. They're getting some mileage out of this castle placement, and they're taking advantage of the gold mine at the same time. see how blue is doing blue is holding up surprisingly well for somebody for, for somebody who who has no like defenses besides his castle and not even the military does he have any military units whatsoever let me let me check this like switch to military and see. he has like <laughs> he has no military does not need a military 
Let's, uh, I'm just gonna t I'm just gonna title this game like this match. Who needs a military? You know. <laughs> like it's 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 how can I blame him as as his immediate enemy? Like neighboring enemy is not even taking advantage of that. Like there's yellow and red over here, and they're not taking advantage of the fact that he has no military whatsoever. And the outposts are still standing. Also the mangonel. There, there, there's the there's there's the mangonel here. There there's that. Got some endemic warfare on the western flank and uh Mongol player seems to be under pressure. His uh his ally, his uh his his Frankish ally has uh is basically putting a stay in the corset, as they would say in a different time, and he has his castle, he's popping down he's plopping down his army, being a good pocket player. This is what pocket players do, they they help the flank. Unlike me myself, I always play pockets, but I don't actually. I, I just get all the benefits and none of the, and none of the responsibility. His archery range is also under attack. I don't remember. Do Mongols recruit their their horse archers from like their Mangadai from stables or from archery, uh, from the archery range? I remember in Age of Empires, forts from the archery range. I'm not. I don't remember in this game. I see. Oh, uh, I think it. That, that guy came. Cavalry archer came from the archery range. It seems. Orange though is holding in. Um, not for much longer though. That that trebuchets is uh, there's two trebuchets there. It's gonna it's uh, it's gonna spell doom. They're slowly tying the noose up. Meanwhile, yellow and red are just not pushing at all. They're just super defensive right now. This is not the time to be defensive, especially when your ally is under pressure. Like this is. This is the point where you're like, shit, we have to, like, take whatever time, you know, purple and orange are gonna buy for us and just push, push on blue, push on green. Especially now that, that, that green, that, that Ethan is sending over his, all of his, like, forces to support the, the, the attack on the western flank. If you're not winning this fight, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, like, like, cut your losses. You gotta, you gotta cut your losses and, and uh, tit for tat, go on the enemy flank instead. Raid their economy. Oh boy. Oh my. That, that this is the great cavalry battle of our fight of our time. I don't think I've ever seen this many cavalry on the screen at once. see what these resources are food gold yeah mongols are pretty damn exhausted in terms of resources so as much of the enemy team it seems yeah all he has left is this town center all he can really do is just just migrate someplace else go behind his teammates let's see how purple fares uh, and, and, and this fight. Especially knowing that he hasn't, like, blocked off the entire area. So, the Brightons are just gonna happily march through this whole, uh... March through this gap and then just, just raid his economy as well. While his military... Yeah, Purple's military does not look, um... Does not look like he's doing too well. To say the least. But Neskar has really, 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 like, really lived up to, 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 to the, to the strategy of economic boom. Like that is, this is quite something. He's, 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 he's playing manor lords. You know that, that that's not what this guy's thing. He's playing. He, he, he thinks he's playing manor lords, and yet he's still winning the game. He's treating it like a <laughs> blue is basically treating it like a city builder, but he's also winning on the military aspect somehow. Yeah, yellow is finally doing what I was telling them to do earlier. They need to, they need to like do their own attack. Like there's no way they're stopping the there's no way they're protecting orange. There's no way they are stopping the the western attack unless they 
Uh, unless unless they, they 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 deal their own blow to the enemy the enemy economy. Meanwhile, the Japanese player is just he, he's just doing things, you know. He's just he's just existing. Like Red has just ignored him entirely, just circumvented him. He's just boxed him in. He's just boxed him in with castles at this point. I don't know what, what gives you. Let me let me check the fog of war to see what they see. Yeah, I'm guessing he just assumes there's more defenses back there. There's a military or something. He's just too scared to go to journey there. And purple's economy. Uh, purple has surrendered. I just saw that. So two two players on the enemy team have surrendered. Uh, it's down to yellow and red, and I really really doubt. Like there's they already they already got some of Heli's camel or sorry some of his uh, his light cavalry. Roaming in their tent, roaming in their tents, roaming in their, in their, in their uh, backyard. It's it's Saracens versus Saracens right now, and the and the, yeah, everyone. If that's it, Japanese player. Like I, I do not understand how this player like survived this whole game. He's still there. He's not even doing much, like, he's just... He's just casually, quietly farming in the... In like, his cute farm in the corner of the map. I want to see the stats here. Let's see who got the most in economy. Yeah, definitely, like, the, the humans really were the star of the show, like, by far. It's not even a contest. They did, they, they not, they, they boomed, they took advantage of being pocket, and they were all... They, they were front and center military. I guess military score is almost equal to the entire enemy team at this point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Let me check here. Humans. Yeah, wood gathered as well is something. It's quite something. He was just plopping out those town centers like it was nobody's business. I can't I can't see their APM. Okay, well, whatever. Well, anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. And thank you so much, Ethan, for giving us the save. And as always, if you have any uh, nice uh, Age of Empires 2 uh, multiplayer battles, uh, HD, DE, I don't care. I, I prefer 3v3 and 4v3 because it's more hectic. But you just send anyway and I send anything and I'll uh, cover it in good time. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!